Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. It's me, Dr. V. Jayakumar. I am making lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering students. In this lecture series on dynamics of machines, we will be discussing about introduction to locomotives. Before we discuss about partial balancing of locomotives, it is very important to understand about various types of locomotives. In this video, we will be understanding about meaning of locomotives, their types, arrangement of cylinders in two-cylinder locomotives, then difference between inside cylinder and outside cylinder, coupled and uncoupled locomotives. So let's get started. This chart presents the overview of various types of balancing of masses problems. We have already covered all types of problems under balancing of rotating masses. In this class, we are going to talk about introduction concepts related to balancing of two-cylinder locomotive engines. We have heard about the term locomotives. What are locomotives after all? Locomotive is the power unit of a train that provides the motive power for the train. In a way, locomotive is engine of the train. Now let us discuss about various types of locomotives. The first type is steam locomotives. Steam locomotives use steam engines to power the engine. It is the oldest type of locomotives. In this, coal is used as a fuel to produce superheated steam from the boiler which is used to run the steam engine. Steam engine converts thermal energy into mechanical energy. So this mechanical energy will be used to power the train. For obvious reasons, steam locomotives are not being used these days. They have become obsolete. The second type is diesel locomotives. Diesel locomotives use diesel engines to power the train. In this, thermal energy of the diesel fuel is converted into mechanical energy using diesel engine. This mechanical energy is converted into electricity. The electricity produced power the traction motor which is located at axles which drive the train. For this same reason, Diesel locomotives are also known as diesel electric locomotives. The third type is a very popular electric locomotives. They use electricity from the overhead lines. Using electricity from the overhead lines and feeding it to the electric traction motors which are located in axles. These traction motors drive the train. In practice, we have the fourth type, namely dual mode locomotives. They are also known as electro diesel locomotives because these locomotives can be powered either from an electricity supply like an electric locomotive or by using the onboard diesel engine like a diesel engine locomotive. Based on the requirements, we can easily switch between diesel and electric pickups. Having understood the various types of locomotives, especially from the syllabus of kinematics of machines course perspective, our objective is to study the balancing of two-cylinder steam locomotives. Though steam locomotives have become absolute, from our subject point of view, it is very important for us to understand the process of partial balancing of locomotives. Usually, steam locomotives used two-cylinder engines. This 
3D isometric view will make us to understand the arrangement of two cylinder in a locomotive. Let us understand the parts of this locomotive. We have two driving wheels. Two cylinders, cylinder 1 and cylinder 2 of same dimension, identical in nature, which in turn will be having piston 1, piston 2, piston rods, connecting rods and associated cranks. As you could see there, the cranks of the two cylinders are placed at right angles to each other. This is the top view of the two cylinder locomotive. As you have said, locomotives have two cylinders and two cranks of same dimensions. Why the cranks of the two cylinders are placed at right angles to each other? This is to obtain a power stroke at uniform intervals so that to have uniformity in turning moment diagram. In other words, having two cranks at 90 degree will help the engine to start easily after stopping in any position. Since it involves rotating driving wheels as well as two reciprocating engines, there will be some unbalance in this locomotive. So after due process, balancing masses will be added. Usually, the balancing masses will be added on the rims of the driving wheels as shown there. Locomotive can be classified based on the arrangement of two cylinders as inside cylinder locomotive and outside cylinder locomotive. As you could see there, both the cylinders are placed between the driving wheels. Then we call it as a inside cylinder locomotive. Whereas in outside cylinder locomotive, cylinders are placed outside the wheels rather than in between the two wheels as shown in the schematic sketch. Locomotives are also of two types namely coupled and uncoupled locomotive based on the number of pairs of wheels they are coupled. In coupled locomotive two or more pairs of trailing wheels are coupled to driving wheels. These days what are the locomotives we see they are all coupled locomotives. In uncoupled or single locomotive, trailing wheels are not at all coupled with the driving wheels. Practically, uncoupled locomotives are not in use. It may be noted that in uncoupled locomotives, there are four planes to be considered for balancing, two of cylinders and two of driving wheels. Whereas in coupled locomotives, there are six planes to be considered for balancing two of cylinders, two of driving wheels and two of coupling rods. We will cover these interesting topics in the forthcoming classes. Now, can you identify the type of locomotive shown below in the diagram? Yes, the shown diagram is an outside cylinder coupled locomotive. As you can see, cylinder is placed outside the driving wheel and also all the wheels are coupled using coupling rod. That's it. Hope you found this video very useful. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.